During a period from 1946 to 1952, in a small town in western Germany, the residents heard what resembles a six-gun salute on the 15th of March every year. Some residents made frequent trips into the surrounding hills in hopes of finding the source of the noise, but to no avail. The townsfolk eventually coined the area as Gunpowder Hill. The children of the town even created a legend about it, stating that soldiers who in that time were missing but presumed dead had been killed in an execution-style massacre and were buried somewhere in the hill. The purpose of the six-gun salute was to guide people to the location of the men. On the 15th of March, every year, the children would gather at the edge of town, eagerly awaiting the six gunshots to be heard. In late 1951, the hills on the outskirts of the small German town were surveyed for the future construction of a NATO military site. The military base was to consist of a series of deep underground bunkers and weapon supplies in case a Soviet invasion occurred. In February of 1952, construction began. Just four weeks later, the crew began digging a massive 200-foot deep hole for the future underground storage bunkers. It was during this time that the crew made a morbid discovery. As they neared the end of the digging operation, a human hand was seen sticking out of the bottom of the hole. Upon future examination, 27 bodies were discovered at the bottom of that 200-foot deep hole, dressed in prisoner of war uniforms worn by the Allies in Nazi war camps. A NATO officer ordered for the bodies to be exhumed immediately. As the medical team slowly carried out the bodies, they looked on in puzzlement. The bodies were remarkably well preserved. Furthermore, the POW uniforms bore a strange insignia which was unlikely any of the men had seen before. An orange circle with a single black dash in the middle. However, the most unsettling characteristic were the faces of the men who were exhumed. Their eyes were wide open, and their mouths were sealed shut with an unknown adhesive. The bodies were then dispatched to the local morgue for immediate identification and autopsies. That night, the local mortician began his work. However, he found it difficult to concentrate on his task. The eyes of the first man he was about to begin work on seemed to be staring back at the mortician from the autopsy table. He shook his head and just rationalized the sight as the imagining of his overactive mind. The mortician took his scalpel and began his first cut into the body's chest. Blood poured out of the incision with staggering force. The mortician backed away from the table in shock. The red liquid began running down the table, pooling on the floor below. The eyes of the body began watering and streaks of tears ran down its face. Soon, the eyes rolled back into the body's head and the bleeding ceased. In horror, the mortician began to make his way to the door on the verge of nausea, but not before catching a glance at the 26 other bodies lying out on separate tables. Their eyes looked back at the doctors with tangible fear. The men were still alive.